If you're going to get one thing, would it be TT bars or aero wheels? Bars. The bars. Yeah, absolutely. Bars are so important because it, it, it makes your position better and because the rider is so much more of a component of the over, overall drag, um, you know, two, three, four times as much as the bike. Making sure the ride is more aero is going to like make much more of a difference. Yeah. Someone said, "Should I be thinking about elbow width, or as narrow as possible?" Sort of old news. Elbow width. If you go super narrow, then um, it can cause your head to pop up a little bit too much. Um, it's something that we tried to avoid doing with Chris because um, we went in a little bit, but if we'd have gone in too far, then his head would have raised, and we wanted to make sure his head stayed between his um, between his elbows. And we found with with George that when we got him to pull his shoulders in really narrow, it popped his head up and it was actually slower. So um, don't go super narrow. Make sure you're comfortable and you can maintain it. Um, but uh, but something that still kind of like squishes you off of the front is a good idea. How much time might you save by not reaching for your water bottle? And is there an alternative? You can get water bottles with integrated drink straws and things that triathletes have. Um, the problem with that is that the straw itself creates almost as much drag as you know you might get from a from a bottle in the down tube. We did some testing on bottles recently. Didn't yeah, we? we did. Yeah, bottle between the arm was pretty good, and that kind of like idea of kind of going reaching for your bottle while you're still holding onto the air bars with one hand, quick drink, put it back in again. Um, actually, wasn't too bad aerodynamically. Um, better do that than have a, a massive bottle on down tube. So a big bottle on down tube is actually very bad aerodynamically. Um, so a nice fitting bottle between the arms, also a small kind of five six hundred milliliter bottle just tucked underneath the saddle, um, was not much of a drag penalty. Yeah, and reaching behind to get it is going to cost you like barely anything. You know, it's not going to cost you five seconds or something to reach behind, drink, and, and put it back. It'll take five seconds to do, but the amount of time it'll cost you will be like fractions of a second. Yeah. And deciding if you need a bottle at all is quite important. So for a 10 mile TT, you might think 20, 25 minutes, 30 minutes. As long as I hydrate well beforehand, I just won't take a bottle. Take yeah. the bottle off, take the cage off, and that will make your bike quite a lot faster. Yeah. As opposed to Chris's 24-hour TT, where if you didn't drink for 24 hours, you'd probably be <laughs> dead by the end. Is a lower front end always more aero? No, no, no. We, we did it with Chris. It was, um, it was, it was, it was pretty good, but it wasn't like amazingly good. Um, and we, in fact, sorry, we found with George that um, it was getting you more comfortable and getting you into a kind of better position for your for your head, but. Um, it wasn't suddenly like, you know, the drag wasn't plummeting when we went lower and lower. Um, so no, absolutely not. And not only that, even if it is a little bit more aero, but it costs the rider power output and they can't get the, get, get the effort out, yeah. then it's going to be slower overall. And that's the most important thing. More aero doesn't always equal faster. The rider still has to be able to pedal. What's a good and affordable aero road bike? So uh, we got Richard Giant, didn't we? Yeah, Giant Propel. That's Giant Propel was pretty good. Yeah, but going from frame to frame has definitely got less of an impact pounds per watt than if you had if you kept your existing bike and went for you know, better tyres, maybe slightly deeper wheels, things like that. That would probably speed you up more than just going from a, an aero bike to a slightly more aero bike. Yeah. Um, if you went from like a round tube steel bike to an aero bike, that would have quite a big impact. But Generally these days modern bikes will tend to have aero elements about them, so you'd have to spend quite a lot of money on the bike to get the same amount of benefit as you would from you know, going from wheel wheel upgrade or something like that. So yeah. there are a few far eastern bikes and open world bikes that are pretty good. Um, but uh, but you know the, unless you're you're paying big bucks for one of the super aero bikes, they're all gonna be relatively similar. Um, there's nothing that stands out as like amazing and like three hundred quid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, yeah. As someone getting their first TT bike, what yeah. tips would you give them or what to look for? Make sure you get a bike that you can fit on. So if you've already done some TTs maybe with clip-ons on a road bike, spend a couple of extra quid by trying to make that road bike as simulate a TT bike as much as you can. Maybe get an inline seat post or an adjustable stem or something to, to figure out what sort of position you then want to transpose to a TT bike. The last thing you want to do is buy a mega bucks TT bike and then it just be the wrong fit for you and you're too high or the saddle's not in the right place. Um, but apart from that, you know, uh, you, something that's again like vaguely aero that's got the, the kind of features that you want. Maybe it's got an integrated bottle that might be helpful for you or an integrated front end. Um, but making sure it's adjustable. So for yeah. example, making sure it's got plenty of steerer tube left on it. So it's, it's not coming from someone who's slammed their bars down as low as possible and slammed their saddle down as low as possible. If you're, you want to have that room to be able to move come up and down from wherever that point is to get, this, get the bike right for you. Yeah. Um, and we, we, we like at AeroCoach, we, our team riders tend to ride Svelos and Treks because um, they test pretty well. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can get the lower end models are still pretty good, yeah. um, as well as the top end models. Um, so they're quite a nice. One of our team riders won the national ten mile 
uh, TT Champs in 2015 on a bike that was less than a thousand pounds in total. So between the frame, the wheels, the skin suit, the helmet, everything, we spent less than a thousand pounds on it. And yeah. um, it was eBay special, so it was just you know getting the you know, right bike off eBay, spending the money in the right place. <coughs> yeah. Um, and yeah. so in total, it was less than a thousand pounds, and yeah. we won the national 20, 10 mile champs on it in 2015. So yeah, we had a budget for it, and we spent it all on error testing because that's 80% of the drag, so that's the thing that's going to be the most impact on his performance. Um, and yeah, he was beating people on, you know, eight, nine, ten grand bikes, yeah. but um, the bike was good enough, uh, the wheels were good enough, and um, his was position was great. That? Was that was an old Trek, like a really old Trek from like 2004. Yeah. So it's like an 11 year old oh. bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's falling to bits now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Someone said, how much sort of aero difference is there with having your cat? like flicked up. Oh wow. Versus flicked up. I reckon, <laughs> I reckon it's going to depend on the helmet. If you're wearing a helmet, it'll depend on what vents are on the front of the helmet. Right. Uh, and if you're not wearing a helmet, the most error thing would be to have the cap backwards with the clip oh, in the back. Nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, so in 1991, yes. Chris Boardman won the National Hill Climb Championships utilising a disc wheel on yes. the back. Is a disc wheel always faster and things like that? If the gradient is uh, low enough, slash the rider's quick enough to be doing over around 25 kilometers an hour, mm -hmm. aerodynamics wins. Mm. So um, if you're doing a race like, I think the, um, is it Monsell Head, where yeah. it's like just over a minute, mm -hmm. the winner did, did it at like 32k an hour, full full aero wheels, yeah. Yeah, aero bike the whole lot. Um, but uh, but I think I think one of the reasons why he also did it was because it was stiffer than his current wheel, um, and it was pretty light anyway. But if you're doing a race, Unless it's a hill climb where you're going to average less than 25 kilometers an hour and stop at the top, always run the most aero stuff you've got. What qualifications have you got basically, or do you need to start doing like aero and wind tunnel things? Okay, that's a good one. So um, obviously cycling aerodynamics is a, is, 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 is a big topic and there's lots of different things you can do. You can focus on, um, you can focus on products and components. Uh, you can focus on uh, the bike fitting aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So um, my uh, background is in uh, biomechanics and exercise physiology, um, as well as some stuff we were doing with um, you know components and power meters and stuff like that. Um, and aerodynamics was, was a part of what I did um, early on in the process really because we were looking at um, moving people's pedals around and we found that you know bringing your pedals in was slightly more aero and everything kind of went from there. We've got various different people in the in the team that have got practical experience so Jess is former amateur world TT champion, um, one of our guys an engineer uh, who does all of the CFD and CAD work um, and then uh, Rich is a former national or well, three-time national champion, won 10 mile champs uh, a couple of times so um, for, for cy of the cycling industry in particular, lots of people have lots of different backgrounds. A great anecdote is that Steve Head, um, who unfortunately died a few years ago, uh, the guy who, uh, who founded Head Wheels, um, never had any academic background in, in cycling aerodynamics or anything. He had an arts degree, um, and yet he, he, he owns one of the you know, biggest cycling companies in the world.